Hello, I've had my Tesla Model 3 for two years now and I did have a big surprise only a couple of weeks ago. But first are my findings, cost, opinions of running my Tesla Model 3 for two years. If you can subscribe and like, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Now, we don't use the car every day, uh, preferring to walk or cycle when we can. Uh, and most of the 16,700 miles that the car has done in two years has been on road trips. We've been to Scotland twice and we live in Cornwall, been to Wales, Spain, Portugal and the Isle of Wight. It was also the first new car I'd ever bought in 50 years of driving. I've owned 20 cars and none of them have ever been new, but I was lucky enough to have a number of company cars of which I would probably be driving about 45, 50,000 miles a year. Not so much with the Tesla my only new car I've ever bought. So this is what I said a year ago after I've had the car for just a year. The collection day was exciting. That was a year ago, 120 miles driving home. Autopilot is included, but you have to activate it on the touchscreen. Menu, something we realized on the motorway driving home. I had watched hundreds and hours of YouTube tutorials uh, with owner's experiences, but I'd never sat in a Tesla before collecting mine. And it was by a long way the most expensive car that I had ever purchased. I've been driving cars, trucks, buses, airport heavy loading equipment for over 50 years. But for some reason driving the new Tesla out of Bristol in my Model 3, I felt like a driver had only just passed the driving test. We headed off to Scotland a month later in our 2000 mile road trip and we learned a lot more about the EV, but also Tesla superchargers and free destination chargers and some free Charge Place Scotland public chargers available at the time. For part of our Scottish trip, we went on the East Coast uh, in the area of Ayr. Uh, doesn't have many Tesla superchargers, but before going, I ordered a Charge Place Scotland card because I could see on the ZapMap app that it was the most popular uh, public charging in Scotland and it's free and I'm very glad that I did. Some of them are free or very reasonable prices. They're not always the fastest but destination chargers don't have to be fast unlike motorway service chargers that do need to be quick. The thing is on buying an EV other than a Tesla I would suggest using GridServe who have a good network of chargers throughout the UK. They often seem to be next to the Tesla superchargers in good location and it's good to have a backup or two just in case. Welcome to all viewers and of course Americans, Canadians, Australians, Kiwis, Irish, Scots, Welsh, English, Scandinavians, European and everyone else on the planet Earth and hope you can subscribe and like and please leave a comment below. What I've learned having gone on road trips that B&Bs often have free destination charges and some places don't even advertise this facility. So if my car was parked close to the apartment I asked if I could top up charge and they always said yes on three occasions. Another bonus of owning an EV. The overall cost of Scotland road trip was much less than petrol or gas and much better and a fraction of the cost than the cruise that we had planned. The money of the cruise that we didn't go on went towards the Tesla, helped us afford it. The Wales road trip was not quite so far to travel from Cornwall but great fun and again free destination charges in all three places we stayed in. None of them were advertised but everyone said yes and the car was conveniently parked close to the apartment so that was good. I always said can I top up, never fill up. The roads can make a great difference to real world mileage. Motorways at 70 mile an hour or higher are not good uh, but slower stop starting 30, 40, 50 is fine and you can get some good real world range once the batteries are warm. We also had a really good uh, road trip to the Isle of Wight and then we went to Scotland again and this time went up to the Orkneys uh, which is EV heaven and charging. Real world mileage there was fantastic, beautiful scenery and extremely friendly people. I thoroughly recommend you go to Orkney Isles. I don't use the car every day if I don't need to so most of the 8,000 miles was on road trips. Charging the LFP battery to 100% is great 
and that is recommended by Tesla at least once a week, much better than just 80, 90% on older models. In total, I charged at home 3,300 miles and that only cost 38 pounds. That's quite ridiculous because it was only 5p a kilowatt hour in the early hours of the morning. Quite amazing. Uh, it'll be a bit more this year, but it's still a fraction of the price of gas and petrol. I charged at Tesla superchargers for 3,500 miles in total, and that cost me £372. And I also charged at some public charging and free destination chargers. So the total charging for this year's 8,000 miles was £445. That's under 6p a mile. Compared to my previous diesel Audi, uh, the same miles would have cost me £1,312. So I saved £867. All electrical charging averaged one third the price of gas, diesel or petrol. And that includes the dearer Tesla supercharger. So you, if you did charge more at home than I did, you can save even more, even with prices going up this year. If I had charged all my miles at home, it would have only cost £90 for 8,000 miles. And that's an amazing 93% less than gas, petrol or diesel. I do pay £10 a month for the premium connectivity. That's £120 a year and it can be cancelled at any time. So total costs this year were just £300 compared to, and I look back, £750 on average for my Audi. And everyone knows bills can be a lot higher than that for a year. So it was 60% less and of course there's no road tax. I've saved this year over £1,300. So the results of my year with the Tesla are I just couldn't go back to petrol, diesel or gas. I love driving it so much. The car makes me smile. I think it's a fantastic looking car and design. It's probably been a bit picky but the boot trunk would be better if it was a hatch. But of course, hatches are much more popular in Europe than they are in the US. So I quite understand that. It is hard to find a negative with my Tesla Model 3 with an LFP battery. I do wish they would build a smaller version of the Model 3, a more affordable car. But I doubt if they will happen soon. And they're making too much money making much more expensive cars. So in the meantime, I'm looking forward to another year with Jennifer, my wife, and the Tesla Model 3. She doesn't always want to come on these videos, but uh, she definitely will when we next do uh, a road trip soon, hopefully. She says it has all the fun bells and whistles. It's a fun toy for adults, and it makes you want to get on the road and travel and enjoy the road. And to that end, we're going to Portugal in a few months' time, and very much looking forward to that. So a year ago, the Tesla Model 3 would have cost me £7,000 more than the 42000 I paid for it two years ago. But since then, the prices have come down. So if you bought one a year ago, then you won't be too happy with the depreciation. Mine in the first year appreciated in value because the prices kept going up. What is the biggest difference in charging costs? Well, charging at home has gone up from 5p a kilowatt hour to 9.5p a kilowatt hour. That's with uh, Octopus Go. Uh, which means that instead of just over penny halfpenny a mile charging, it's now costing 2.5p a mile, which is still at least a tenth the price of gas for those people who seem to think that charging at home is more expensive than gas. It's definitely not. It's, the, it's not even close. Now, Tesla superchargers, they have gone up a bit, certainly not as much as GridServe, um, who are my next favourite public charger. But And I used to use them occasionally, but I don't now because they're that more expensive. I think they've gone up at least 60%, whereas Tesla have remained much the same, not a huge amount of difference. If I didn't have a Tesla, I would use GridServe as I like their contactless payments and no subscription. They make it very simple. And frankly, most of the public charges are just ripping people off. There's one near me at £1.50 a kilowatt hour. That's quite disgraceful. But Tesla superchargers cost half the price of gas. And I do regularly check the numbers. My watts per mile this year has averaged 240, 
or put another way, 4.1 miles a kilowatt hour. And you can see that on the shorter trips, it's much higher and it shows 189 or over 5 miles a kilowatt hour. A lot of the miles this year, 8,700, were in Spain and Portugal. Uh, Tesla superchargers and the free destination chargers, which I love so much on road trips, staying at Airbnbs. A lot of them will give you free electricity. They're more than happy. So the Portugal and Spain Tesla superchargers cost a lot less than they do in the UK. No surprises there. So this year's Tesla supercharging is the same as the year before. But the biggest shock this year was how much insurance went up. Last year it cost £355 and it had gone down on the year before on 378 But this year it was £568, a whopping 60% increase for one of the safest cars on the road. That's my biggest single expense this year. But of course you've always got to insure a car and how that would compare with a, a similar uh, I don't know, a BMW, an Audi, or another car. I have no idea, but you have to pay it. But of course, I've got no servicing costs, no repairs, no new tyres, and no road tax, which I do love so much. I did have to replace a broken key card, and uh, that cost £31. And uh, now I always keep them in the cardboard pouch. I no longer have an issue paying the extra data on my phone. Uh, for the Tesla software updates. So I've solved that cost that I did have a year ago. The bodywork looks absolutely fantastic. It's as good as new. I'd only had it about a month. And you know when you see these flecks of white uh, dust, you just flick away. Um, when it didn't flick away and there was a very, very small chip. So I got some touch-up paint, put it on there. And now I can't actually see where it is. At the time you could because your eye is drawn to it but over time you forget and you look at the overall car and I think the, the blue looks quite fantastic and it does change through the light. Um, I would definitely buy it again. Now the Model Y is probably more practical especially for me getting in and out of the car it would be a lot easier but it is more expensive it is less efficient but I think the Model 3 looks so good. I think it looks better than the Model Y. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you disagree. So running costs in my Tesla Model 3 are a fraction of the cost of gas cars, even if they are a little bit more expensive to buy in the first place. So would I buy my Tesla again? Absolutely, yes, definitely. At the time, two years ago, I did look at used models, but there was only a few thousand difference. There wasn't even 5,000 difference on a two-year-old model, and that just didn't make sense. Now there is big differences. You don't have to spend 40,000 on a Tesla. You can get them for in the region of 20, 25,000 pounds that have done a few miles. And I would probably either go for that or even consider an MG or maybe another model. MG4 is pretty good. Of course, you don't then have the advantage of the Tesla superchargers, which is so good. And I definitely wouldn't consider going to Spain and Portugal without the Tesla superchargers. And I must admit, initially, it was the Tesla superchargers that made me think, well, we'll go up to uh, Scotland. And of course, when we got to Scotland, or rather I'd figured out before, because we went to a few places where there weren't Tesla superchargers, that Charge Place Scotland is so good. And if you're thinking of buying an electric car in Scotland, you've got such a great... Um, system there public charging you you know really that isn't a reason not to buy one there are others but like price um, but that's fantastic a bit like your health care it's way better in Scotland than it is in England um, and of course the other thing is I would say that so get yourself a charge place Scotland card if you're getting an EV or even if you're going to Scotland get it and the price there of the electric charging is much cheaper than it is in the UK. And if you're going to Spain, Portugal, get yourself a Mayo card. Definitely buy the car again. The costs have been minimal. It's a fraction of the price of gas, petrol, diesel. There's no question about that. I regularly do the numbers. But please tell me whatever you think. Please leave your comment below. Hope you can like and subscribe. And uh, please don't forget to take your reusable mug, coffee, tea, whatever, wherever you go. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.